Okay, so first up on the list is Garbina Muguruza. Uh, such an awesome backhand. What I love about her backhand uh, is also that she can just hit winners from anywhere on the court. Cross court, down the line, people approaching on her. So let's go through what I really like and what you want to copy. Uh, she's one of the taller women on the tour. And what I love about this video, which really shows, I mean, she always does this, is she really keeps her athletic base. You know, she realizes, hey, I'm, I'm a tall person, got long legs, just a long person. If I stand too straight up, I'm going to be making unforced errors. I'm not going to get to shots. So I got to keep a good athletic base. So you can see that she's always staying down and low and through her balls. Another thing that I want you to focus on is when she's hitting, let's just take a look. I want you to notice her footwork here. Every single time she's hitting a shot, she's able to figure out a way to drive her body forward into the ball. It's very hard to get her backing up on a shot. But you're going to notice that she does it according to where the ball is coming in, the angle of which it's coming in, where she wants to redirect the ball. Watch how the feet are in slightly different positions each time. So she's always starting with the open option. What is that? That's the leg that you're going to set up and plant on. Okay, So she's going to set up on this leg. She's going to get to most of the time like a semi-open stance. So here she is. She's lined up the semi-open stance. She's going to put her weight here on this leg. And she's going to transfer forward. But notice it's not a direct traditional step forward. She kind of steps out to the side. Okay, so you can see right here. Look at the look at that nice wide base. And she's keeping her body a little bit open as she's getting ready to hit because she's probably receiving this ball from cross court. And she probably also wants to redirect it cross court as well. So to do that, it's good to stay a little bit open. But she's still driving that leg forward. You can see that. So you can see she's still got plenty of momentum forward. You can see her back leg sliding along the concrete. So she's really committing into the ball. That's, that's a trademark of her backhand. Now here's the next shot that she has coming up. Okay, so she's again set up that semi-open stance. You can see she's in an athletic position. She's staying low. She really commits her body forward to the ball. Now this is more of a traditional step in. Okay. And she drives. Again, as she's hitting, notice the commit from, from the back leg to the front leg. All the weight gets on the front leg as she's hitting. That back leg actually gets pretty well off the ground. So she's really leaning into that ball. Okay, here we go. Next backhand. Now, watch how she keeps turning and positioning her backhand. This right here, when you do this, she might be driving this down the line. Maybe still hit it cross court. But this would be something you do with your feet if you do want to drive a backhand down the line uh, as she's getting set up. So this could be a change of direction here. Now it looks like she's still going to go cross court. But you can see how this is a completely different body setup than the first two. So she closed her body off, still commits into the ball, hitting through. Okay, So we love that about her backhand. Now the next thing you're going to notice is her ready position with her racket head. And we talk about this a lot on two-handers doesn't bring a racket too high. She keeps her racket work pretty simple. You can see the racket tip slightly facing up. And as the ball is going to come, she's going to relax those hands under and then through. Her backhands have a little bit of tossman, but she really loves to drive the ball and flatten it out. Really loves to throw all her body into the ball. So if you're looking to be aggressive and hit flat, aggressive backhands, this is the one to watch. We'll take a look at one more. Right here in this clip, we can see that she's in the forehand grip. How do we know that? Because her strings are facing to the ground. So this is a great uh, shot of her switching her grip so she can add top spin to her backhand. She's got the racket tip up. Okay. And as she comes, I love how she's doing like this double hopping motion to the ball. So let's take a look at that. Watch how she's got like a hop, hop, she's floating. So it gets easy to really commit into the ball. Always being very proactive with her feet. It's probably my favorite thing about her. Now you can see she's relaxing her wrist under the ball, puts our weight on the front foot, driving through. Back leg comes up a lot on quite a bit of shots to really just fully commit into that shot. So that's first on my list. 
Uh, I'm not really going in order, but these are my four favorite WTA backhands at the moment, and I think there's lots of great fundamentals for you to copy. Let's get to the next player, and as always, guys, comment below. Let me know whose backhand you love on the WA Tour, and maybe we'll do an analysis on them uh, on another video. Okay, next is Coco Goff. I love her backhand. Um, what I love about her backhand is talking about some things on her backhand in general is that she ha hits it perfectly on the run. Her technique is so efficient. I've, I've watched her up close in some matches. You don't want to get in a cross-court rally with her on the backhand. Um, I just think her backhand is perfect. You know, I think her forehand could actually improve some more, but the backhand is just, is just locked in. And she has so many great fundamentals. So, so let's go through them uh, right now. And if you can hit your backhand like Coco Goff, you will have no problems out in your next tennis match. So I'm just rewinding here. So let's go right now. Um, so one thing I want you to notice, let's just, let me just blow up the screen here. I want you to notice how quickly she reacts to this tennis ball that is right there. Okay, so if you see that tennis ball... It's just been struck, and then watch how quick. You see that? You see how fast? Watch how fast she's reacting to the ball. The ball's not over the net yet, and she's already, right, okay, this is the backhand. Get ready. And she really works her unit turn beautifully. So right off of her mini split step here that she gives, she's landing and then going, reacting at one time. So does a great job reacting a unit turn. I notice lots of people with their two-hand backhands, like they'll take their racket back first and their body kind of falls. You'll see that her body is moving as a unit. That's what the unit turn is all about. Notice how, again, she's going to set up here in a semi-open stance. So she's going to load on this leg, and she's going to transfer in the front foot, really commits into that ball. And notice how she also really holds her racket, which, which helps for a short backswing. She holds her racket out here to the side. Okay, so we can see that racket going out to the side and up. So I like that. Uh, her front arm, very little bend in there. Her back arm, we can see she's got some bend in there. As she's coming into it, really dips in nice. Great spacing. All the weight committed on the front foot and reaching through. Watch how long. That's the only thing I love about her backhand. And I find that lots of recreational players will hit this shot. See, a lot of recreational players, as soon as they make the contact with the tennis ball, as soon as they're contacting the ball, the next thing they do is they just basically come right over their shoulder. You can see that she's going to keep driving forward through the ball. Her rack is going to keep reaching out to her target. Full relaxation. Watch again as she lands. Boom, the ball is hit. The racket's not, I mean, the ball is not over the net yet. And again, she's already right in that unit turn. Staying up in that semi-open stance. Racket tip to the outside. Dips it. Now driving all the weight. All the weight. All the commitment. Leaning in on the shot. That's what you're going to see. These pros do so well on the back end. They really commit their entire, entire body forward after loading the back leg, which for a lot of people on the back end, that's hard for them to do. They, they tend to you know, pull up on the shot. But you can see there's no pulling up there. Absolutely love her back end. Okay, let's get to the next back end on the list. Okay, next up on the list for my favorite back ends. That's Ash Barty. Might might surprise you, but we're really talking about her slice backhand. And look at that. Look at that shot. She has so much variety on that slice. And, you know, this, in my mind, a big reason why she's number one in the world is, you know, all the women, they mostly have a two-hander and come over the ball and, and really hit a lot of uh, very impressive driving flat, strong backhand shots. Well, she, in her rallies, many times prefers to get into a slice backhand. And you're going to notice that often she will draw either a short ball or an unforced error off of this slice, as she did right there, because it's different. Not a lot of players that are on the WTA Tour are going to hit a slice backhand like this, so fluid and hit it so much. 
and do so much with the ball so that when she plays her opponents, you would think, well, this is a, a you know going to be a weakness because these these all these women just crushed their two handers, and how is a slice backhand going to hold up against a crushing two hander? You can see it hold up very well, and lots of times wins these battles because the ladies are not used to these balls skidding and staying so low, so it throws off their tempo and their rhythm, and lots of times it draws an unforced error. Look at that! Look at the way she gets them off the court. I mean, she's just moving this person all around, creating the unforced error. So the lesson here is, you know, look at who your circle of friends or competitors are and think about what they do. If you play a bunch of people who hit a, a lot of topspin, well, maybe you should try rather than just copy them. Think of developing something different that might throw them off, like Ash Barty does with her slice. Or... If you play the opposite, let's say that you're playing everybody, they, they're a little more old school. They, they hit flat and slice. If you can show up to the courts one day and have a massively kicking topspin forehand that, that goes over their shoulder, well, now you're doing something that no one else they're playing is doing. You're going to get a lot of free points is based off of that. So um, that's the biggest lesson. Okay, let's take a look at some of her fundamentals that she does on her slice backhand. So this actually comes from a video by Head Racket where she's explained how she hits her slice. First thing she talks about is setting up on that outside leg. So, you know, whether you're hitting a topspin or a slice, you really want to put all your weight there. Now, what she didn't mention, which I like to talk about, is she set up in this power position beautifully. Uh, a lot of people who have slice backhands and they're wondering, why, why can't I drive it? Why can't I get, get any power like Ash Barty obviously does? They don't establish this position. Look how the, the racket butt is basically pointing out to the side fence. And the string bed, it's like she could go back and take a nap on her string bed. This is a position you want to get. It, you, you can look through... A ton of tennis magazines find Ash in this position, uh, Roger Feder, anybody who's got a slice backhand that you dream about hitting. This is a photo that you're going to see right here without her hitting a shot. We just kind of go, okay, she looks like a good player. It's just because of the way she's set up. So preparation is so important, and this is a move that a lot of people miss. Now watch this. This kind of reminds me of Steffi Graf. As you see this, Watch how she starts to really commit that front shoulder into the ball. You can see how she's starting to leverage, and she's almost got like this downward slope to her shot here. Okay, so she's really leaning down and cutting through that ball. The back toe, I love this. I like to call this the golfer finish. Okay, so she keeps that back toe up. Look at the beautiful counterbalance okay so you can see the wonderful counterbalance in our arms here and I like to talk about this too is with her finish now she's going to continue it through but a lot of people to see the pros you know come like way over here and so they'll hack their slices you can see that she stayed with the ball a long time and at some point you do want to be reaching out to where your target is and you want to feel like you can take like a Coke bottle, right? And you can kind of put it on top of your racket when you're done. This is a great way to really develop that driving slice that stays low. Too many people hack across the ball. You know, as you get more feel and flow, you can continue through as as Arsh, Ash will do. So uh, let's see here. So here she is again. She's got that power position that we talked about to the ball, so we're just getting a different angle. Look how she's really leaning in to the ball, hitting, and then she's driving. Again, we could put the uh, bottle of Coca-Cola on her racket. So I really like this fundamentally. You, you'll see some pros, they don't finish like, like this, but this is my favorite finish for recreational tennis players. So that they're really staying with the ball. That they don't add too much cut into the ball. And here's another thing. When you're slicing the ball, you're actually thinking about hitting the ball solid. You're not thinking about you know putting too much action on the ball. Because if you do that, 
A lot of times that backfires on you and you end up having the ball float. Okay, last but not least is Emma Raducanu, the U.S. Open champion who became, started to become a really kind of overnight sensation at uh, Wimbledon. Of course, you know there are no such things as an overnight success. She's been working her whole life to get where she got this year. Really hope she can play amazing tennis in 2022. So what, why do I keep kind of going back and forth here for you on this? Is again, kind of like uh, Coco, you can really see the unit turn. She's not really moving the racket. She's just moving her leg. She's already got the racket tip up in a ray position. She just goes out to the outside leg, racket tip up. Also kind of uh, interesting, leaning a little forward with the racket tip. And she's got uh, maybe the, out of everybody here, like the best rhythm loop on the backhand. She's got a beautiful loop. Now, I love loops if you can make it flow like this, where I don't like loops because she does take it fairly high. The racket's fairly high right now if we zone in on it slightly over her head. And, you know, you do got to consider you have to have good timing. It's kind of weird. Like, like a loop will promote good timing once you get the, the rhythm that you don't have to think as much. But if, you, if you're having trouble preparing off of the hit and making this all happen in sync, it can really make you late. I find that a lot of people who try and mimic loops are late. Uh, so if you're somebody who has good timing and a loop works, this is probably the best loop to copy. But you've got to be careful with looping forehands and backhands uh, because it just makes the timing, this racket that, again, you can see is basically now straight up into the air, it's got a dip. So again, Zarev is one of my favorite backhands on the tour, but it's got a dip below the ball, as you can see she's able to do before she hits it. But, you know, I think she's kind of, what I like about her backhand, it, it, it's a little safer, but very similar to uh, Garbina's backhand to where she really loves to drive and commit her body into it, but she plays with maybe just a little bit more margin, a little more spin, uh, which is going to help you as a recreational player to get the ball in. I'm not saying her backhand's better, but I'm saying for you and your safety, you can see as she's hitting, she's got some margin there on her forehand and her backhand. Uh, so that's my list. Let me know what you think. Do you like the players that I picked, you like their backhands, who would you put on the list? Um, so if you like this video, if you're still watching it, you had to like something about it. So please like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more lists like this and more tips. And also, if you wanted to improve your serve so you can set up awesome forehands and backhands, go up here and I'm going to give you 33 free serve videos serving A to Z. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching sign off. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Go out, make it a great day on the practice court, and we'll see you on the next video.